What is going on, guys? Are you asking, Shannon, what are you doing there? You've got your probe stuck in the hole of that lady's unit. What are you doing? Well, we are taking carbon monoxide readings, making sure that everybody is nice and safe and sound inside of their home. And of course, we always want that number to be zero. The only acceptable level of carbon monoxide inside of a home is zero. And this is zero. This is a Linux two-stage furnace. And you can see that the gas valve has been set properly and recorded. 1.7 on the low, 3.5 on the high. And if you guys know what it takes for a furnace to burn properly, you know that you need the right amount of gas and the right amount of air. Too much of one or the other is gonna throw the process off. It's gonna throw the burn off. And you're gonna start losing efficiency. You're gonna start burning improperly. And you're gonna start making excess byproduct, specifically carbon monoxide. So I have found over the years that my preferred method of diagnosing a bad heat exchanger is to come out here to the vent pipes and sample the CO. Now, unfortunately, Baccarat doesn't make the good old Minoxer 2 or the Minoxer 3 anymore. And basically all you can get are the big old fancy detectors that measure everything and you know they're a thousand dollars and you don't need all that so this is one of my favorite tools here this thing's got some age on it but you just keep up with the the sensor send it in the back rack every now and then um, when i come to these systems i'll usually record what my reading out here in the pipe is on the pipe inside so that way it can be monitored and kept track of over the years and if it ever changes and you see a big spike then you know that something's got to be going on um, but i don't really need a big old combustion analyzer for this i just want to sample carbon monoxide because it's just like when you pull up behind a car at a red light and it's choking you to death you know something is wrong with that vehicle and it is putting off huge tremendous amounts of carbon monoxide like lethal deadly levels of carbon monoxide now a properly burning furnace a lot of you guys might not be aware you think that if you stick your head up here to this thing for a few minutes you're going to meet your maker and end up six feet underground but you're not because a properly burning furnace is going to have 25 parts per million or under. Most of them are right around 12. When a furnace is dialed in and the gas pressure is set right and you got the right amount of gas and the right amount of air, that thing will burn very efficiently and you have very little CO as a byproduct coming out the exhaust. Now, when you come out here and you smell that thing and it smells like the car in front of you at the red light and you just smell this very it's a very unique smell once you've smelled it you've smelled it and you'll always know what it is you can pop up through the scuttle hole on a roof and if there's a rtu up there with a bad heat exchanger and the wind's blowing in your direction you'll smell it right off the bat and know that one of these things has got a bad heat exchanger because it will have a very bad smell i say that this thing's burning ripe i've always said man this thing is burning ripe something ain't right and a lot of times you'll see a black ring around the pipe out there because of course this is our intake this is our exhaust you see little water droplets dripping off we're going down there on the ground making us a wet spot but i have found the best way to figure out whether you have a bad heat exchanger or not is to insert a probe and check the co in this thing and again if everything is burning properly you're gonna usually be 25 parts per million or under. So you've gotta say, what would make it go up? What would make it go high? What would make it get up over 100 or 200 or several hundred parts per million? Well, you've either got too much gas or too much air. 
So you throw your manometer on that valve in there on the manifold side and you're running a proper pressure, we'll say 3.5 on natural, and you know your gas is right, the only other thing that could cause that is too much air, excess air. And where would that come from? That heat exchanger is supposed to be a big sealed metal chamber, right? We're just blowing air over it to lift the heat off and blow that in the ductwork to heat the house. We should never be pulling any byproduct out of it or blowing air into it. But if you get a high reading out here, something is causing that. And what that something is, is a hole or a crack in the heat exchanger. And when that blower comes on and it positively pressurizes the ductwork, you're going to push air into that crack and you're going to throw off your burn. You're going to introduce more air than is needed to burn efficiently. And back in the day when I first started, like most of us, we were always kind of led to believe that the blower might siphon out carbon monoxide and blow it in the house. And you're just usually not going to see that. If you've got a, a hairline crack or even a couple of hairline cracks, that's probably not going to happen because the inducer motor, the pull of the inducer motor, is going to be able to keep the byproduct pulled out here through this pipe and overcome any pressure of the blower motor that might siphon a little out and blow it into the ductwork and make somebody sick or kill somebody. For it to start putting carbon monoxide in the house, you've got to have a good size breach in a heat exchanger. Um, you know, several BB sized holes all over it. You know, a big huge crack, a rusted out place in one of the, the turns. You know, if you've ever seen a heat exchanger out of a unit, they usually make S turns. You know, it'll go back a couple of feet. It'll make an S turn come forward. It'll make another S turn and go back again. So usually in those turns, you know, you might have a place that's just completely rotted out. And then it can start putting carbon monoxide into the house. So that's why we got to take this seriously. So let's go ahead without further ado. We're going to stick it in here. And we're just going to watch this reading. And... She'll start to go up there. And if our heat exchanger is okay, we're not going to climb up that high. It's very surprising how little carbon monoxide comes out of the exhaust when it's burning properly and she's dialed in and working good. So we're right there about 16, 17, 18. That's where we're going to be. Now, that exhaust is moist, it's wet, you know, you see it dripping there. So that's why we got this little filter doohickey down here. We've got some yarn in there that sort of absorbs the dirt and the moisture and stuff so that don't get sucked up into your sensor. But you can see there, that is a properly running furnace. That baby is dialed in, gas pressure's right. We don't have any kind of compromised heat exchanger. Everything is good to go on this furnace. If I would have stuck my probe in there and that thing shot up over 100, that's when I'm going to be looking at condemning something because that's when you need to be worried. Something ain't right. And you need to find out what it is and don't just let that stuff go. Uh, but if nothing else, even if you don't have any kind of carbon monoxide detector to do that, you can still go outside if the exhaust is terminating out a sidewall. You know, you don't need to be climbing up on roofs to do nothing. But if it's terminating out a sidewall and you can get to it, at least go out there and smell of it. You know, see what it smells like. It shouldn't have very much smell to it at all. And if it does, that's when you need to start getting a little worried about why it smells that way and what's going on. Uh, but anyway, you guys, that's my story as far as cracked heat exchangers and finding it with carbon monoxide readings in the exhaust. That is about the most foolproof method I have found for finding that issue with a furnace. And I have found it a lot over the years. I mean a lot. And every time I condemn a furnace and we go and pull that thing out to do the change out, I always tell the guys, you know, make sure you keep that thing set it aside. I want to see that heat exchanger before we take it off to the scrapyard. And every single time without exception, 
that heat exchanger is compromised in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a crack, a hole, whatever it is. Um, I've got a couple of older videos. The worst one I ever found um, was a York furnace. You can look back in some of my videos from years ago, and that furnace literally scared me to death, and that lady's carbon monoxide detector went off inside the house, and uh, that one probably could have killed her. I mean, it even scared me to see how bad that heat exchanger was but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you got something useful out of it if you did leave me a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment below there if you have any questions about anything we discussed in the video i'll get back to you and answer the questions you know i always like hearing from you guys seeing how you're doing and seeing you check in and stuff so if you're not subscribed you know click the little bell and all that good stuff before you take off and get out of here and guys, I appreciate you watching my little video as always, and I will catch you next time.